Out of respect for the beliefs and practices of Muslims, no image of the Prophet Muhammad or his immediate family will be shown in this biography. Although the religious foundation of Islam included Jesus' message of peace, it had also taken on the Jewish tradition of justice. The Quran's verses that flowed from Muhammad's mouth were now beginning to include a message justifying armed defense of the community. Permission is given to fight because they are wrong. Verily, Allah is most powerful for their aid. They are those who have been expelled from their homes. Muhammad's plans for the defense of the community now began to include the word jihad. It is a term that is often cited by those who oppose Islam as evidence of the religion's reliance on violence and war. But the true meaning of jihad is something quite different. Jihad comes from the Arabic root jihada, which means struggle. It is consistently referred to as a struggle for the sake of God. If the jihad is financial, you respond financially. If the jihad is violent, you respond violently. And these become uh, ways, again, of reestablishing peace. But in history, uh, that notion of jihad then comes to be appropriated and hijacked at a very early period by extremists, and that then connects to what extremists like Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda do much later on, uh, uh, taking this concept of, of jihad to, to legitimate uh, what they choose to do. Muhammad had spoken about jihad while the Muslims still lived in Mecca. But the new revelations now stressed a different side of jihad. They came at a time when Muslims in Medina were fighting for survival, for most had not been permitted by the Quraysh to leave Mecca with any valuables. When Muhammad and his followers arrived in Medina, of course they were then, in a sense, exiles from their hometown. Uh, they were, to put it bluntly, unemployed. Uh, they didn't have any obvious source of support. They weren't date farmers, and all the available land in this agricultural settlement was already spoken for, so they began to make uh, raids. God had given Muslims the order to struggle. Now God's revelations allowed that struggle to include the right to survive. And so you, you also see the way in which jihad then comes to be defined as the right, and indeed at times the obligation of Muslims both as individuals and of the Muslim community itself to uh, defend itself, uh, to engage in uh, defensive warfare. Armed with the Quran's approval of defending their community, Muhammad chose a traditional Arab solution, defend yourself by attacking. Muhammad would lead an army to raid the most important Quraysh caravan of the year. Muhammad's plan was to intercept the caravan as it approached the wells of Badr near the Red Sea. But before his forces got to the wells, word of the Muslim army reached Mecca. Quraysh leaders were outraged that Muhammad would attempt to capture their caravan. A thousand men marched out of Mecca to meet the Muslim army. Muhammad now knew the Quraysh would force him to fight. The night before the battle, the Prophet had no idea if his men were willing to die in what had now become war. But after listening to stirring speeches, his followers vowed to offer their lives for Islam. The Quraysh army outnumbered the Muslims by three to one. But as the battle began, Muhammad revealed he had a great sense of tactics and his warriors fought with ferocity. The Quraysh leaders had believed a show of force would be enough to defeat the Muslims. But by midday, it was the Meccan army that panicked and fled the field. The dedication and cohesiveness of the Muslim army had saved Islam. Now Islam would reveal itself to be not only worthy of victory, but capable of compassion as well. After the first victory that the Muslims achieved at the Battle of Badr, um, they, the Muslims began in the usual Arab way to kill all the survivors and Muhammad immediately had a rev revelation to say no this must stop there must be no killing of, uh, of survivors. Muhammad had set his eye on a more distant goal. The Muslim warriors enemy of today must tomorrow become his brother in faith. Say to those who are captives in your hands if Allah findeth any good in your hearts he will give you something better than what has been taken from you. And 
he will forgive you. The victory at Badr had great consequences. After the battle, converts from all over Arabia began to flock to Medina. Like the Muslims, these converts saw the victory as a sign of God's salvation and protection, similar to God's parting of the Red Sea for the Israelites. The Battle of Badr has enormous significance to the Muslim community, and I think that was the first political act that was successful, which cemented the, the, the vision or the dream that Islam could establish a community. Islam could become a civilization. For three more years, the Quraysh army would try and destroy the Muslim community. They would win some battles, but always Muhammad and his followers struggled and survived as their numbers continued to grow. As the Meccan army struggled home after a final unsuccessful battle, their leader was at last forced to admit, every man of sense now knows Muhammad has not lied. Medina and the Muslim community were finally safe from attack. The prophet was now poised for the final step in the pursuit of his destiny. That step would be his return to the holy city of Mecca. Muhammad's life in Medina was austere but comfortable. He had few possessions but wanted for nothing. He lived in quarters attached to the mosque, usually spending each night in the room of another of his wives. Muhammad's wives were a diverse group. One was a Jew, another a Bedouin. One was even his cousin. Most were chosen for various political reasons, but a few, such as his third wife, Aisha, were clearly matters of the heart. Muhammad now told his followers that revelations from God said each man was permitted to take no more than four wives, and the husband was required to treat them all as equals. 